Well, hey, crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreamin'. I have a super fun, super adorable, super affordable Mod Podge or decoupage, if you might want to call it project, to show you today that involves your iron, some Mod Podge. You can use uh, whatever kind you like. You can even ask Mr. Google for a homemade recipe and you can make it yourself. Oh shoot, I don't know if I remembered to flip my phone. And then some napkins. Anyways, it's, oh, and also some little wood cutout pieces from Dollar Tree. So it's um, super duper easy. We're gonna go from start to finish. As you're hopping on though, tell me that you're there. I'd love to know if you're watching, whether it's live or on replay. Um, let me know if you have any questions along the way. Feel free to sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. And let's jump right in. Okay, so these are some napkins that I picked up at Dollar Tree. I also got these ones. I didn't know which ones I would like the best. Okay, got this size and this size. And after playing around with it for a little while, I decided that I like these the best. Okay, so we're gonna focus on these. Um, honestly, the most difficult part of this project is getting the napkins apart. These are two ply, which means there's an outside layer and there's an inside layer. And I will tell you that on the more expensive napkins, higher quality ones, it's easier to separate the layers. And sometimes there's three. Um, on the Dollar Tree ones, it's hard, a little bit more difficult to get them apart. And also, um, on the do these Dollar Tree ones, they only have two images. A lot of times with the fancier uh, paper napkins, you'll get four. So, but this whole package, and I don't know how many were in it. Let's see, does it say? Uh, I don't still have the outside. Um, it was $1, so you can't go wrong, all right? Um, and this was just recent, so probably your Dollar Tree has something like this. All right, and then we're gonna use a variety of different shapes. These are the this year's um, leaves. They're a little bit different from last year. The ones last year had a narrower little base, this part. And this year it's a little bit wider. But anyways, you get eight pieces for a dollar. We're also gonna use some turkeys and some acorns, okay? So the first thing you're going to do, and we're gonna make them into napkin rings. They're adorable. Okay, the first thing that you're gonna do is find something to work on, and I have, a cake board here that I'm going to be working off of and um, I'm just going to open up my Mod Podge and I'm using one of these uh, stenciling pouncing brushes that you can get at Dollar Tree also and um, we're going to apply some Mod Podge to these two pieces. You could do both sides if you want to but I really don't think you need to. Hi Andrea, how are you? Hey, Shirley. Um, so I only did the front. Okay, so I'm gonna hold on to this little turkey's legs to apply my Mod Podge. You don't need to be neat in doing this. Um, it can be lumpy. You do need to get everything covered though, okay? And so then I'll just lay it down and, and tap some on his little feet. And I'm gonna do this leaf. See how quick that happens. And then it does not take very long for these to dry. Um, let me throw my brush in the water over here. Get the Mod Podge off my hands. It does not take very long for these to dry, but if you're in a hurry, you could use a heat gun to dry it. I just let them dry on their own, I mean, probably an hour, and they're good to go, okay? So before I came live, I did a whole bunch of them just to be prepared and to make sure I liked everything. 
And so these um, pieces here all have the dried decoupage medium on it. And my, the Mod Podge I like is the actual plaid Mod Podge brand. This came from Hobby Lobby. It's a little on the expensive side. This bottle was $5.99, but I've, I've purchased it at Tuesday morning. I picked it up at Walmart, Target. Um, sometimes Dollar Tree has little bottles. I prefer the matte kind, but some people like glossy. And you can also get an antique looking Mod Podge, which you can make yourself just with a little stain. You just add a little drop of the stain to your Mod Podge. And then when you're doing your top coat, you can do the same thing. So you can make it look antique, like this one, for example, or this one. Um, I think I prefer them just plain. Okay, I need my iron. Every time I use my ironing board on a craft project here, people ask me, where did you get your ironing board? This little puppy here came from Walmart. It was like $13 or something. Um, it has a deal. So when you put it down, you can hang it. And I have a hook on the inside of my craft closet and I just hang it up like this on the inside of the door when it's not in use. And then when I'm ready to use it, I just put it together. I am using some parchment paper. This is my ironing parchment paper. I really need to get a new piece because mine has a great big old hole in it. But, okay, so, like I said before, the hardest part about um, doing this project is getting the napkins apart. Oh my word. Some of them are easier and some of them are harder. So off camera, I got this one started, okay? And all you're gonna do, you don't wanna use both layers because the top one won't, the top layer won't really get stuck in there good. So I'm just going to get this started all the way across. And we're literally just pulling these two layers apart. Part of it. Oh well, it's okay. We can work around that. I'm not being very gentle, that's why I tore that. Okay, so you can save this and use it to wipe your hands on some future time. I have a little box down here. So this is what you're gonna get. And let's start with this acorn. Let me determine which side I put the Mod Podge on. Okay. I'm not sure why this acorn has these little blue dots on it, but um, then I'm going to cut my little napkins into a couple of pieces. All right, and then you can lay your napkin over the top of the side that's Mod Podged however you like, whichever part of your napkin design you want to be prominent. Like on this one that I did before, I laid it so that you would see those sunflowers mostly. Um, I do like it a little better when the whole entire thing is covered. Um, so I'm just looking to see what I can do. And I love those sunflowers. So Let's use this, focus mostly on this bottom sunflower. Okay, so I'm gonna lay my napkin over the top of it. And then I'm gonna put my little piece of um, parchment paper over the top of it. This is just to protect my iron. And my iron is turned on, you know, a medium temperature, no steam. And you're just going to push down 
on your iron. And it really just takes a couple of seconds and da da da, it's attached. Okay, let's do another one while I let this cool down because these get hot. Um, let's do, let's do this leaf. Let me see which side is the side with the Mod Podge. This one, I think. Okay, and I have a, one of these that I did not tear. Okay, so we can decide going on here. Let's don't use that one because I got some craft paint on it. We'll use this one. Um, so we can decide where we want everything and obviously you can do this project with absolutely whichever napkin you like. So just to review if you're hopping on late and by the way thank you for the stars. Um, this, these are little wood shapes cut out from Dollar Tree. The napkins are from Dollar Tree. Then we have a coat of Mod Podge over the top of the wood that we let dry. We're just laying our napkin on top of it, putting a piece of parchment paper over it to protect our iron. The iron is set on like, a, not cotton, below that. Um, no steam and we're just gonna go over it. I'm gonna show you the really easy way to get this all trimmed up, and I'm gonna show you what the finishing thing is. And um, I wanna tell you a funny story, really funny, so stay with me. I wasn't brave enough to try this idea that this gal suggested. So I hope I'll remember. Uh, if I had a piece of paper, I'd write it down. Okay, I'm just relying that I'll remember. Let me write it on the back of this. Put this in front of you. I don't want you to see it yet because it is hilarious. Um, okay. So you can see it does not take long at all, and you can look to see if your piece is thoroughly attached. So I would just keep going. Iron in on everything. Let's iron another one. With the turkeys, um, I didn't want it to be so, uh, so busy. Like don't put the sunflower right over the top of the turkey's head or else you won't be able to tell what it is. I have one that's finished over here that I'll show you in just a minute. And I'm gonna show you how to make them into napkin rings which uh, last night we celebrated my husband's birthday with friends and with my son and my daughter-in-law and her parents. And her mom gave me this idea to turn these into napkin rings. So thank you, Monica, for the idea. I appreciate it. All right, so that is attached. Okay, I'm gonna move my ironing board back over here leave my iron on just in case. Okay, and let's find one that's not super hot. This is not super hot. Okay, I'm going to just roughly cut the big pieces off. Okay, and then I'm just taking some sandpaper, which I know somebody will ask me. I think it's 80 is the number of the grit. Just use what you have on hand. Um, you can also use some of these like foamy sanding pads too if you prefer. So I'm just going to take my sandpaper and start going around it. And by the way, I wanna give my good friend Diane credit for this idea because she is the one who taught me how to do this. And um, in fact, I even called her yesterday just to make sure that I was remembering everything correct and she reminded me the no steam part. But anyway, the, this doing this with your iron, it was Diane's idea, not mine originally. I know there's other crafters who, who would do it too, but um, she was the one who showed me. Okay, so as I'm going along, I'm just pulling the bits off 
it's a little more challenging with the turkey and I'll show you that in just a second. Okay, and then when you get to this point, when you flip it over, you're gonna see like there's still some that needs to be cleaned up. So I'm just gonna go along the edge on the side of it with my sandpaper. And nobody's gonna look at the back of these, but you could paint them if you wanted, or you could do another napkin on the other side. Um, it's just completely up to you. Okay, so once you have it all down, still see some. Then I'm gonna give it one more quick press. And then I would take all of these outside um, and I would spray them. You can use any kind of sealer you want. I don't know if you're aware that Mod Podge has a spray sealer. So I would just take these outside and spray them with one coat of Mod Podge, but you could probably also use your basic Rust-Oleum Clear Matte Sealer if you prefer, if you have this and you don't have this. Or your other option is to go over the top of it with one more coat of Mod Podge. That's a little more labor intensive, just stepping out. To, you have to do this outside, but stepping outside to spray it is much easier, okay? And, and then you can sand one more time just to get every little bit of everything off. Uh, so let me show you with the turkey. Where is my turkey? <laughs> Sit down uh, in front of the TV when you're sanding all of your little bits. The hardest thing was the feet on this turkey. So I just went around the whole guy. And basically get the bigger pieces off. Okay, that looks terrible. And look at the back, you can see where I still have the paper. So to get those little areas off, I just folded my sandpaper in half and I just used it almost like a saw. And don't worry if you take off a little tiny edge of your paper on the front, it, nobody's gonna notice. Or say, I don't wanna eat here because there's a little area missing on my turkey head. That, so then in these gaps, I just literally stuck my sandpaper in there. And that's how you're gonna do it. The feet are a little more challenging. Oh, the turkey legs on this, yeah, the feet on this one are a little more difficult because there's a space in between. So I just did the around the edges and then I kind of pushed the inside part in. So just to clarify, after you're done sanding to get the edges off, you're gonna either give it another coat over the top of everything of Mod Podge or you can use a spray Mod Podge sealer and I wanna tell you something about this or you could use something like this. Uh, why do you need to do that? Well, you know, if you're sitting down, like for example, if you were using these for Thanksgiving or fall or any kind of special meal during the fall and your water dripped on this, I don't want it to be ruined. I wanna be able to use these this year and next year and the year after. So that's why you're gonna seal it, just to make it completely, um, you know, safe, that it's not gonna get wrecked after the first time it's used. So, okay. Oh, and what I wanted to tell you about this, and stay with me, because I do have that funny story to tell you, and I'm, I wrote it down so I don't forget. Um, I 
was wondering if possibly I could be even quicker in this project and just spray my pieces with this Mod Podge matte clear acrylic sealer instead of painting them with this and the brush like I showed you at the start of this video. Nope. And then iron it. No, that does not work. This really only works as the last and final coat. So just in case you're wondering. All right, so then after we have um, sprayed them, then we're gonna turn them into napkin rings. And we're gonna use yet another Dollar Tree item. You know, I love Dollar Tree crafts. Uh, as long as they look a little more elevated than Dollar Tree, they don't look like you just went into Dollar Tree, <laughs> you know, like it's exactly a Dollar Tree craft. And I think that these are nice, with some paired with some nice cloth napkins, these will be beautiful. Okay, so here's the back of it, and your napkin just goes in here. And I just used this ribbon from Dollar Tree. It's burlap ribbon, nine feet, it says for scrapbooks, gift bows, crafts, and decorating. And it's just a um, like a burlap look and it has wired edges. I think the wired edges part is important because that's what gives it its, uh, you know, stand up-ness. Okay, and I did, not, I did this one also. So I was thinking it would be fun to have a whole table, same napkin, same finish, but different shapes. What do you guys think about that idea? Oh, you're so nice, Bonita, she says, you're so talented. Everything you make turns out beautiful. Well, thank you very much. Yes, okay, Deborah has a great idea. She says, would a fingernail file work for the tiny edges? Yes, absolutely, that's a very good idea. I didn't think of that. Um, if you have fingernail files and you can get the, pick those up at Dollar Tree, if you don't have any, um, that would work great too. So I have my Tom Turkey and my pumpkin. And let's turn, I also have an acorn. Is this the one I just, no, this is the one I made earlier. No, it's this one. You can see on each one, I have a slightly different focus and here's the leaf so the leaf is mostly focused on the pumpkin and i would say this is mostly focused on those sunflowers and you are going to have a hole on all if you use these dollar tree cutouts because they all have a little hole on them but from the front you won't see that if you don't poke it if you don't push that hole in okay so let's make um a napkin ring out of this acorn all right, like I said, I'm using this Dollar Tree ribbon. Use what you have. If you have a wired ribbon, it could be a color. I mean, it can be absolutely whatever you want. And I used seven and a half inches. So let's measure that. And cut it. I did not do anything fancy to finish the edges because it's all tucked inside. Okay, and then, whoops, need my glue gun. I'm using, by the way, my Sherbonder low temperature hot glue gun. This is a project where you could get it on your fingers and hot temperature hot glue can really burn you. So I would suggest that you use a low temperature hot glue gun of some sort. And I'm just going to put some glue on the back of this. And I'm using this funny little finger thing that was made by one of my followers. You can get these little pink finger guards at Dollar Tree also. But I'm going to stick my ribbon in there. And I'm, can you guys see, I'm just pushing it down with my little finger. And let's see, we could use a little bit more right here. Okay, so there's the start. 
and we're just going to wrap this around and glue it inside. Um, I think this burlap ribbon goes lovely with these napkin rings, so even if you see it a little bit, I don't think that's a problem. All right, so let's put some glue now on the ribbon that we glued down. Let's bring our little thing in. And I'm gonna use my finger to push it into the glue. And that is basically it. So you could have a whole set of different things. Tom Turkey, a pumpkin, the little acorn, uh, the fall leaves. Where's my leaf? Like this. Uh, I don't know if they have any other shapes, but you guys, you could do this exact same idea for Christmas because you know for sure Dollar Tree is going to have some pretty Christmas napkins. And if they don't, you can get pretty. Tuesday morning is a great place to pick up pretty napkins. And I know there's some other crafters out there that have napkin club thingies. Um, I don't. But uh, you can get napkins everywhere. And you can find something pretty everywhere. And during uh, Christmas, Dollar Tree has Christmas trees. They have something that looks like an ornament. They have something that looks like packages. So you could do a whole set of these, this idea, for Christmas. And same for Easter. And same for summer. Okay, and each one of these probably cost, I'm not even kidding, 30 cents if even that. Okay, so um, so the funny thing that I wanted to tell you was that I was talking to, you know, via Messenger and the comments on a previous post, I was talking to somebody about getting, how to get this off, especially when it's a complicated shape like this leaf pattern. Instead of, um, you know, you could trim it and do the sanding thing. And this gal, I don't know how she does it. If you're watching, tell us. She said that she lights her napkin on fire. And it burns it all the way to the edge and, and that's it. She said it's the best way to clean it up. Now, okay, as a former lawyer, I am not encouraging you to do that. In fact, I, if I were to try it, I would either try it inside my kitchen sink or outside because I don't want to burn my house down and I don't want you to either. Um, and I don't think it's that much trouble to just use a sander to get it off. But if you're watching, whoever that person was, was that you, Debbie? Okay, we want to know how you do it. But again, I'm not encouraging anyone to light a fire of a paper napkin inside their house or near your house <laughs> or in the woods where there's dry anything. Um, okay, Candy says, just use a lighter. Oh my gosh. I don't know if I'm brave enough to do that. Does it stop as soon as it gets to the shape? Okay, a lot of you guys are saying that you've seen it done. Um, I don't know, I'm kind of a big chicken. I worry about people getting glue, hot glue burns and worry about people, children swallowing magnets and then people burning their houses down. So, um, okay, uh, somebody's saying that another crafter did the burning method on their live just recently. Uh, Personally, I don't think it's that hard to do this, you know, just to use a little sanding, uh, a piece of sandpaper to get, get it all cleaned up and nice like this. But, so, that is what I wanted to share with you. And all you need for this project is some Mod Podge of your choice. If you wanna make it yourself, the recipe is basically white school glue, like Elmer, Elmer's glue, and some water. But Google it, and you can get a, a Mod Podge recipe to make at home if you want. And then we used our shapes. And I just used a yucky brush to apply it. Uh, I don't have another one. And then um, 
we took our napkins apart and once it was dry we just ironed it on there then we sanded off the edges and then we gave it a quick um, clear coat on the top either with this Mod Podge clear sealer with our regular clear sealer or with another coat of Mod Podge and then we glued a little loop that's seven and a half inches to um, the back of it and we're done and I think they're adorable really adorable and super duper affordable and this idea you can take and make it your own in your own colors your own style for whatever season you might want to have something pretty for your table you could also use paper the long paper napkins inside of these if you want it Oh, Liz says she loves my shirt. It's new. I got it at the loft. I only shop there when they have 40 or 50% off. <laughs> the burning does tend to stop in tight spaces and you have to relight it. I don't know. Maybe I'll try the burning thing um, outside over the weekend or in my kitchen sink and I'll let you guys know if that works. But I hope you guys liked this craft project. I will get pictures of a whole set, oh, so I'll finish this one, and let's see if I can make some sort of a pretty little vignette here that you can take a screenshot of if you want. I know a lot of you guys like to do that. Okay, stand up. Well, this guy doesn't want to cooperate. So thank you to everyone who did stars. I so appreciate that. Feel free to sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle if you liked this idea. Um, that's the thing that helps my page grow the most, which ultimately helps me to be able to continue crafting every day with you guys. Um, I have some fun stuff coming up over the weekend, so I hope you'll join me for that. Uh, if you have any questions, just let me know. And I'll see you guys later. Bye. Oops. One last thing. I would love to know in the comments which one of these you like the best. Do you like the turkey? Do you like the pumpkin? Do you like the acorn? Or do you like the fall leaf? Tell me your choice. What's your favorite? What, which one you would prefer more for your fall table or if you were having a a special dinner or doing something where you wanted to set a pretty table. Okay, I'll see you guys later. Have a great rest of your morning.